I'm seven years old, standing up in my crib. <laughs> I kept falling out of the crib. I really, you know, I mean, they gave me a bed, but I kept falling out of it. And uh, I'm standing up there. My parents are going out, see, and they're just walking back and forth. We live in an apartment uh, building. It's only one bathroom, and it's my bedroom, and my parents' bedroom, and they have to pass by my bedroom in order to get to the bathroom. And if the door's open, I can see them. And I know they're going out, because they keep bumping into each other, you know. <laughs> boom, 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 get out of the way, boom. Where's my sock? I don't wear them, you know. <laughs> so, uh, this is before babysitters, when parents did not believe in babysitters at all. You know, the philosophy was, what? Let some stranger look after my kid? I'd just as soon leave him home by himself. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm staying up here. I got my sleepers on. I wore sleepers till I was 12. I love sleepers, because I used to put mashed potatoes in the bottom of my sleepers and make my mother feel them. Mom, Phil's a dead rat. She'd faint. <laughs> My mom would faint for anything, man. I used to get hit in the head with a rock and cover up the blood. She couldn't stand blood for nothing, man. I'd go home, stand right behind her. She's cooking. Mom, look, blood. Why? <laughs> She'd faint. So I'm standing up in the crib, and they both come up, you know. And now, the whole thing to them is that they have to scare me to make me stay in the bed, see? They tell you some kind of a lie. That's what the parents used to do. There's a green monster out the door. If you get out of that bed, they'll, he'll eat you right up, you know? <laughs> so, I'm a con man, I really am. I'm a, I'm, I'm a good con man. Boy, I never went to school if I didn't want to. My whole thing was so beautiful. My mother used to come in, boom, open the door, and, uh, and I'd be in the bed, you know. And she'd say, aren't you going to school? And I'd say, mother, is that you? <laughs> Just bring your face here so I can, I can touch it before I leave, you know. Never went to school one day. And always got out at 3.30 to play. Used to go up to her, 3.30. A miracle happened! I'm well! You're not well, get back in the bed. Honest to goodness, Mom, a little angel came right up on my bed, hit me with a wand, twang, said, go out and play. <laughs> and she had to believe the angel. I knew that. So anyway, I'm standing in my crib. And I said, now, don't get out of the, the, the crib, please. See, my, my father, I love my father's uh, approach. It was basic. Stay in the bed. That's all. You know, stay in the bed, see? I knew how to answer him. I will. And it, well, that was it. You know, he'd go, and then I'd jump out of the crib, you know. <laughs> Pop is beautiful, but mothers, they give you a half hour. Stay in the crib because your life is important to this and that. Oh, yes, I've heard it before. <laughs> but my old man would just come up, stay in the bed. Right, Dad. And he'd leave. He said his piece, you know. <laughs> so now my mother comes in. I don't get out of the crib. Yes, mother, I'm tired anyway. I, I'm going to sleep. The Sandman's beating me to death, and I'm so tired. Pardon me for not seeing you to the door, but I'm just tired. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, don't get out of that crib. Now, the last time you got out of the crib, you went in and listened to that, that radio and heard that awful Lights Out program, and it scared you so bad that you smeared jello all over the kitchen floor to make the monster slip if he came at you. <laughs> And your father went into the kitchen to get a drink of water, slipped and hurt himself. <laughs> now, to make sure you don't, you don't get out of this crib, we've placed over a hundred black poisonous snakes around your crib. <laughs> and if you so much as put a toe out there, they're gonna bite you, you're gonna swell up and be dead until morning. <laughs> I don't see no snakes. They're invisible. <laughs> and she left, boom. Boy, I'm telling you right now, I'm so sick of this place, I'm gonna run away from home. She's always putting black snakes. Snakes! You get out of here! 
This is not your room, this is my room, and you just get out of here. I don't care who sent you in here, this is my room. I didn't ask you to come in here, nasty snakes. Snakes, do you hear me talking to you? Huh? Snakes? I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> come on, have a heart on a guy, will you? Are you out there? Listen, snakes, now, now don't you bite. Don't you bite me. I'm going to put, put my toe out there. Don't bite it. Just give it a little snaky lick. <laughs> Come on. OK, listen, you can bite it just a little bit, but, but don't put none of your juice in it. Nothing. Well, go ahead, I bet you're not even out there. Go and bite it, suckers! Yeah, I know you wasn't out there. Lie to me, boy. I'm going to listen to the radio. We had a Philco radio. It was about six feet tall. Had 287 knobs on it, of which only two worked. Off on volume and the station selector. <laughs> the extra knobs were if you'd lose one, you could replace them right away. You don't have to go to the store. And I love to get scared to death. Anything that has scared me to death, I loved it. I loved Frankenstein, a Wolfman, and a Mummy so much. I used to sit right up front, and then they would come at me, and I would squish myself under into the orchestra pit. I hid all over the place. I'm telling you, I had pictures of them all over my house. Never looked at them. Was scared of them. There were three programs that were scary. One was suspense. That wasn't too scary. That was suspenseful. Then there was Inner, uh, Inner Sanctum where the guy played the organ. Do, do, and then he would come in, good evening, and he was so happy to scare you to death. And he opened that door, and then he told you a weird story about his uncle, Harry, who had lost his hip bone or something like that. Oh, man. But what really scared me was when he closed the door. At the end, of, I knew somebody was in the house then. And I started smearing that jello. No monster gonna get near me with that jello on the floor. I've tripped up many a monster with that jello on the floor. Yes, sir, Bob. And now, I got my radio, I turn it on. You gotta wait maybe, maybe eight days. It'll heat up, you know, eight days. And then I was, oh, there's good news. Good evening. That's the guy. Go ahead, scare me to death. I'm ready. I'm ready. Scare me, man. Come on now. And welcome to Lights. Old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, scare me. I was dumb enough to do whatever the guy said to do on the radio. Turn your lights out. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. They're out, they're out. Go on, scare me to death, I'm ready. Tonight's episode is about a chicken heart. A chicken heart that ate up New York City. Yeah, go chicken heart, go. Go get them, eat them up, chicken eye. Scare me to death, I'm, re I'm ready, I'm ready. The chicken heart was kept alive in a laboratory in a vat. Special solution, half blood, half sodium salicylate. One day, a careless janitor knocked the vat over. <laughs> he went to get a rag to clean it up. The chicken heart grew. Six foot, five inches. And in search of human blood. janitor came back, opened the door, the heart ate 
beat him up. What? <laughs> Go get him, Chicken Heart. Go get him. Go get him. <laughs> it moved out into the hallway. <laughs> Rang for the elevator. <laughs> Fourth floor. Ah! <laughs> Go get him, Chicken Heart. Go get him. You will. Moved out into the street. Ate up all the cabs. Beep, beep. The Empire State Building. Ate up the Jersey Turnpike. It's in your home state. It's outside of your door. And it's going to eat you up. Oh, I got my jello start smearing it all over the floor. Get out of here, chicken heart. I set the sofa on fire. You won't come near smoking fire and jello. My father came in the house and what? <laughs> what the hell's the sofa doing on fire? <laughs> Come in the house, the chicken heart's gonna eat you up. Hurry up, okay. <laughs> Zip. <laughs> what chicken heart are you talking about? <laughs> the one on the radio. <laughs> Tell you the idiot, turn it off. thought of that. <laughs> for two years, anybody that passed by our house, my father, whether he knew him or not, would call him in. <whistles> hey, come here, I want to show you my dumb kid. <laughs> Go on, tell him how you burn up a $100 sofa and broke your father's arm, save us from that. <laughs> 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 